Hey guys, Capper here and welcome back. This is definitely going to be an exciting video on which skid steer we selected. I'm going to run through the top three, run through some of the details, and tell you which one we selected and some of the future projects that we have in mind. It's going to be a separate video. So, our, so the top three were between Gale, uh, I think it was a T215 or RT215, Bobcat T650, or a CAT 259D3 or a 289D3. Now, first of all, my first number one pick, hands down, would have been a Bobcat T76. Those come out here in about a month or so, and it's a completely redesigned T650, but they are just too expensive. But that T76 is a beast and it had everything that I wanted on it, every single option. The other three, there's going to be give and take with them. They're all great machines, but you can't always get everything that you want in life. So, and as far as the price, I'm not going to go in exact pricing. Um, you know, we tried to really negotiate because whoever, whoever it is, they're going to get some nice digital feedback from our channel because obviously we enjoy showing you guys and sharing the, equipments, the equipment that we use. But none of them were fully on board to where we got like deep, deep discounts. So basically the pricing we negotiated is something that you guys could negotiate. You know, nobody went like where they made a loss or totally broke even. They still made something on them, on the quotes that we got. But we did settle for the most bang for the buck overall. So let's start with the Gale. Um, the Gale RT215 is a fantastic machine. Uh, what Gale did is they basically are going away from the electronics, um, the electro over hydro. So their new RT215, your joysticks literally control the hydraulics. Like literally, they go down into your hydraulic pump and there's no electronics in between you and what you're dictating your machine to do. Um, the specs are pretty good. It fits in. We wanted to stay 10,000 pounds ish or maybe a little less. But the one thing the Gale didn't have that, that kind of bumped that one out was it didn't have a creeper gear. And not everybody needs a creeper gear. I just felt for our, our future uses that creeper gear was important. Because if you saw me power grading the driveway with the cat and the power rake, I used the creep gear on that because you have to go slow and I just find it easier to be able to program your speed and then just hit that joystick all the way down and just hold it. It's just, it takes a lot less finesse, if you will. And the same thing if you're bush hogging or clearing land, you might want that. So that's the only thing that knocked the gale out really. If they would have had a creep gear, I got a really nice quote from them. It's a great machine. And I am gonna take our new machine over to uh, John's farm or he'll bring his gale here and we're gonna, we're gonna have some dirt fun this summer. Okay, so that brings it down between the cat and the bobcat. Initially, I looked at the specs for the 259D3 in the cat, and I really liked that machine. It had pretty much about everything I want, but it was a little bit light on the weight and the lifting specs. And it was a little bit slower on the speed, you know, the uh, hydraulic speed and the speed of function. And when I compared the 259D to a Bobcat T9, T595, that's when I started leaning a little bit more towards Bobcat. Um, the T650 Bobcats, they're, I'm pretty sure they're doing away with them because the T76 is replacing them and that T76 is just a beast. So the options I would have got with a cat 
are pretty much everything. Um, it had the ones that I really wanted was I wanted a, I wanted the torsion suspension, I wanted a self-leveling loader, a vertical lift loader, I wanted a ride control or smooth ride, which is basically when you got a load out there, um, it smoothens it out so your ride is much smoother. I wanted a creep gear, um, backup camera, and there's one other thing. And I wanted the adjustments for your hydraulic sensitivity. So the cat would have had all of them. Um, but the Bobcat T650, after going kind of back and forth and weighing the whole thing out, we ended up going with a Bobcat with a T650. Now the things that I didn't get in the T650 that I wanted, I didn't get the suspension in the tracks and the loader is self-leveling but it only works on the way up not on the way down but i had to weigh everything out looking ahead in the future so and the t650 compared really an apple to apple is the the 289 d3 so when i spec those two out the bobcat really just blew it away on specs um but i i'm didn't turn off the 289 it's just I got a better deal a better package deal um, from Bobcat and the other part of the equation is the service um, the closest cat place that we can use here in Illinois is like two hours away an hour and a half or two hours something like that now granted they don't charge you for a service truck from that far but Bobcat is a half hour and the other thing that Bobcat has is they have a whole parking lot of implements that I could rent any day of the week for a skid steer and the pricing was just better overall um, we've dealt with with Kyle there on the mini excavator and so now we're dealing with him again and he just gave us a really good package and all of the extras that we're getting with it are also saving us money so we are gonna get the blue diamond severe duty brush cutter which you know there he's also saving us money um, I quoted that out at another place and let's just say we're getting it for twenty five hundred dollars than their best quote at another place so that's saving us twenty five hundred dollars I'm getting a four in one bucket a Bobcat four in one bucket which you know he's cutting their margins so the add-ons we're basically getting you know very near cost so we're adding on the bluetooth radio which that was another thing i wanted adding a backup camera i'm adding side lights uh, to be able to work at night a little bit safer and what else am i adding on the bobcat oh and i'm adding the rear counterweights on the bobcat so that bobcat's going to come in in the mid nine thousands for weight but it's just a beast for the specs uh, compared to either of the two cats uh, the 289D is getting closer on the specs, but the Bobcat is much faster than that 289D, which is heavier. So what I'm not getting on the Bobcat that I did want is the torsion suspension. But I took everything in, you know, as one package, the whole package. Not, there's not one, like, single thing that is better on one or the other that would have changed my mind it's the whole package deal so I'm getting the wide track package on the Bobcat so those tracks are 17 and a half inches wide and the the more track you have covering the ground the better the ride is going to be but I drove one and I tested it out went over some bumpy ground I didn't get specific film of that um, but I did that recently and I remember I also drove Ryan's uh, T650 for a while back when he was here. Granted, my back and that wasn't quite as bad back then, but after driving a, uh, a T650 and it didn't even have the air ride seat, it was, it was definitely doable and I'm definitely getting the air ride seat also. That was another thing. The heated air ride seat was another thing that was definitely a must-have. So I guess if I had to say the must-have things was a heated air ride seat, some form of ride control to, that when you got a load on, it smoothens it out. 
I wanted a backup camera and I wanted to be able to adjust the hydraulics. Those were like the must have things. So stay tuned. Um, the machine is, is actually in Missouri right now. So it's going to be delivered here to Illinois probably this week. They're going to go to work on the Bluetooth. They got to add that in and the side lights and the weight kit and that. So, and as far as being able to pay for it, I had to wait until we got the verbal approval on the refinance. So just by refinancing our farm here, we're gonna save over $800 a month. And basically that's gonna pay for the most of the bush hog, but we can also now get into side work a little bit here and there, cause I am quoting out insurance for that to help pay for it a little bit down the road. Not a lot, not to make a lot of money, but if I go help, I could team up with Victor and his land management clearing. I could team up with Whitetail, uh, Whitetail Properties. They got a land management side business with Whitetail Habitat Solutions. And then I got other friends here. So I might be able to just pick up a little side hustle to help make that payment. And of course, pay for the machine down the road. So definitely stay tuned. It's pretty exciting. You guys know I like machines and Mrs. Capper said she's, she's willing to start learning the machines, which would be fantastic. If I could teach her the machines, man, then that would be really fun for productivity. So definitely stay tuned. Don't forget to hit the like button and follow us. We appreciate everybody being on board. All right, I'll catch you on the next go around. Capper out. Uh -huh.